Just this year, 150 inmates from a women's prison in Kansas have been employed at candy maker Russell Stover's facility in Iola, Kansas. The company turned to the Topeka Correctional Facility back in April after worker shortages that affected production so much, lines were being shut down at the plant. Founder of the Kansas Coalition for Sentence and Prison Reform says the practice is exploitative, hurts the community, and, and only benefits prisons. So you, you have employers who are unable to find workers. Right. Uh, and you have the entire world telling them, I have an idea, pay a higher wage, and then you'll probably be able to find workers. Right. And the employer's like, oh, you know what? I have a better idea. <laughs> Two birds with one stone. What if I pay a lower wage <laughs> yeah. and get enslaved labor to come and work in, in, in my factory? I think it speaks to structural problems in that when we have these conversations about um, the worker shortage, we're talking about it in such different terms than the actual problem, which is that this situation is so bad that instead of raising wages, they're turning to prisons. That's a very structural problem, and it's a more difficult conversation to have. Admittedly, it's not as easy as sort of like the um, short brevity model that's consumed our media mm -hmm. at this point, but it is clearly the more, I think, useful framework. Right. And as, and as, as appalling as, as this is, from, from a kind of uh, human decency standpoint, you have everybody, uh, you know, people like Noam Chomsky on the left have said, have said look, you know, we, we have mass incarceration. We have people um, who are locked in prison that, that, that we have two, more than two million people we should have nowhere near that amount of a, a prison population. However, actual prisoners themselves have advocated for the, for the right to go out and work because it right. it it it, le it lessens it lessens the the awfulness of of their time there, and that doesn't make it any less ex exploitative. And I suspect that. Uh, these jobs were actually probably pretty sought after. So I was going to say, I disagree. I think it does make it less exploitative because it's something that if it's, if it's as you're saying, the jobs are highly sought after and there's almost a, I don't know exactly what the process was like here, but if it is almost to the extent that it's people are literally asking to take that, it, right. I think it's less exploitative, exploitative from the perspective that there's a want that's being fulfilled. But you're exploiting their suffering. Right. Like you're exploiting their condition. Right. Although I still think it is less less so than if it was entirely involuntary and that it was like something that was a, uh, you know, nobody wanted to actually do that to the extent that the average um, existence of a prisoner, particularly people who are, you know, serving sentences that are way higher than they should be because of the way the system has worked for a really long time, um, it, particularly for those folks, to the extent that life can be made more interesting um, and less miserable and dull and dry, I see that as making it, you know, this is sort of, we're getting into a semantic conversation, but I guess I think that takes the, the exploitation down a little bit, at least a notch. Well, it, it, it's, it's, on, a, uh, it's, on, it's on, a, on a spectrum of torture. Like it's slightly, le it's slightly less bad, certainly, than say forced hard labor on, on a chain gang where, where you're just out there you're forced to break rocks and beaten if you're not. I mean, for you know, for for sure, it's 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 less than some some other awful things. But it, fundamentally, it's it's an indictment of a society, uh, that, and and it's particularly indictment an indictment of an employment industry that ra that is so desperate uh, not to raise wages mm -hmm. uh, for workers. Uh, that, that they would go to these lengths. I was going to say, to me, that continues to be the more glaring error in our structure. When I look at this story, it's like, you're really, you're going to turn to prisoners, right? You're, you're going to turn to prisoners to make your candy um, instead of find a way. And again, like, actually, we talked about this a few times, I feel like over the course of the past month, but like, it's hard to even just blame Russell Stover because this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. This is the system. And yes, they're part of the system, but they have to profit and pay their workers. They have their own workers and we don't know how they're being treated, but they have their own workers to pay a living wage to and to provide health care to. And they also exist in the system. And that's why these conversations are so uh, it's it's almost so like useless sometimes when you see these conversations happening on like CNBC about worker shortages. It's like, well, actually, Russell Stover here is not acting in a vacuum. They're acting as a cog in a broken system. And Karl Marx famously referred to the unemployed as a reserve army, as capitalism's reserve army, so that if, 
if militant workers you know, start demanding increases in wages or better working conditions, then there's this reserve army that they can call in to take, to take those people's jobs because unemployment is as low as it is. The ranks of, of the, that reserve army is, are, are depleted, and so they're, they're drafting actual prisoners into this new reserve army. Now, was Marx's prediction that that is part of the evolution, that that's an essential part? As you sort of start yeah. drafting, from my recollection, recollection, as you start drafting people from the reserve army, it's one of the things that, to borrow the Leninist fl- phrase, heightens the contradictions and pushes people forward, right? Right. We'll see if that's what's actually going to happen, but I do think it's interesting that, like, honestly, to get meta for a second, the fact that shows like this exist and find success talking about stories like this, it's kind of, it kind of gets to a Marxist point, right, that as consciousness raises, um, and the more there's consciousness about the, the misery and uh, the drudgery of the system as it is, the more people want to hear about it. Well, there's no question there's a lot of anger out there, right. for sure. This is Ryan's self-fulfilling Marxist prophecy on full display. (laughs) We have more Rising for you coming up right after this, but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any of our new content.